So a few days ago, I got a request to make a tutorial on how to set up Splinter Cell on PC. I think it's a good idea because all the tutorials nowadays are outdated. So this this is going to be perfect. Um, it's going to be in real time. I'll try to explain as I go. Um, let's just get into it. So I'll put links in the description. The first thing you need to do is go to the Steam guide called Improvements for Splinter Cell. And go to where it says Versus Mode Downloads. And right here, this one that I highlighted, is a download of the full game with the lighting fixes applied. So usually, there's this problem with the game where the Merc shotgun won't show unless you apply this fix. So that saves a whole bunch of time, so many steps, it comes with a few custom maps to... Um, I'll show you how to get more custom maps later. But first of all, the first thing to do is download this, open it up with something like 7-Zip, and just put this versus folder anywhere you want on your computer. So I put mine on my D drive, all these, these three folders are all part of the game. The one we want to focus on right now is System. So, the first problem with the game is that the resolution is really low by default. So what we're going to do is go to default.ini, and there's a few values we're going to change. So here in this spot here, where it says Viewport X, Viewport Y, change all of these to what your resolution really is. So I'll do minus 2560 by 1440. So we'll do that a few times. Okay, save that. One more thing before we start. You want to get this thing too. It's called the frame rate editor. What that does is it stops, it unlocks the frame rate. So it usually runs at just 32. With this, you can run it at, I think 90 is the max. Um, so it's a lot better. That's how I get like smooth looking gameplay. But if you're going to be the one hosting a server, don't use it because it's going to mess up the game and everyone else playing is going to, they're not going to be able to play the game very well at all. Um, so I put a link to that too. It's this, um, this little blue icon. You just open that. You set your limit right there. And you just open the game. Let me, uh, open the game now. Here we go. So first thing you want to do is, of course, make the profile. It's going to save all that. Make your things. And then immediately quit the game, because there's one more thing we need to do. So if we go here, there's this special little other folder that's tucked away in your computer pretty far. I'll put the um, I'll put the real directory in post. First thing you want to do is, in order to even find it, go to this little tab that says View and check Hidden Items, because the folder it's in is hidden. Anyways, what you want to do is, go to this... INI folder for your profile and change screen resolution one's highlighted right here change that to negative one because otherwise you could face a problem where the resolution doesn't actually change once you open your profile so there we go that's nice we can actually launch the game now and it'll run so watch this there you go look, at, look how smooth it is you can actually play the game, but there's a problem, right? We go to find LAN, there's no servers. So here is the next step. We have to go to radminvpn.com and download Radmin VPN. What it is, is it's, an, it's a way to connect online through LAN. I don't really know how it works. That's all I know about it, is that you can play LAN games online. So, I already have it installed, I'll just show you what to do. So you go to this little tab here, it says Network, and hit Join an Existing Network, and then you click this Gaming tab, and search for Splinter Cell 3. And that is all the setup required. That is literally it. So now, we can go back into the game, launch it all, listen to the great theme. hit play on LAN, and look at that, there's dedicated servers. Sometimes these won't be online, so you won't be able to tell if you actually have it on, but if you try to host a lobby, or one of your friends hosts a lobby, and they're in the network, it should show up. Okay, one little last thing, this is optional if you really want to get all the custom maps, because there are a lot of great custom maps, there's a lot of terrible custom maps, but I think it's really nice to have. So there was a separate Steam guide, but I'll just link it in the description 
for this community map pack.exe. We'll just download it really quick because it's a quick download. So this, it's just a little installer. And the problem is people usually just click install without doing anything. This is the wrong directory. So what you want to do is you go to browse, you pick your actual directory. So here's what I would put in. I would put it in, let's see, I'll put it in local disk D and then the versus folder itself. If you put it in one of these, if you like put it inside of the system folder or something like that, it's not going to work. So make sure you specify it to that versus folder. You just click install. It's going to install everything, of course. Okay. All right. It gives a little list of all the maps. That's not important. Here is the proof. All right. So we're going to go to the profile. We're going to go to tutorials. Go visit a map. And you'll see. We have Aquarius, the real map. And then we have a few custom maps. This one has no picture. You can tell these are all custom maps. Um, and it should just work right out of the gate. Here, we'll go to one. I'll show you everything's working. We'll pick Merc. It's going to launch. And look at that. Custom map. Flashlights work. It's running smooth. It's all perfect. Although maybe what you want to do is go to options, game, and set the sensitivity to the max. Because it's going to feel a little bit better that way. Um, and yeah, that's all the setup we need. I'm just going to kill myself. Um, I hope the tutorial helped. Um...